November 7th. Every year, the Army has a toy drive for military families. They're on a mission. I am putting you in charge. I'm gonna do this. To spread holiday cheer. Operation Find Santa. And save Christmas. I think the two of you would make a perfect mom. Jana Kramer, Brandon Quinn, and Tim Reed. This is gonna be the best Christmas these kids have ever had. A Welcome Home Christmas premieres Saturday, November 7th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Oh, I love that so much. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Jessica Radloff. I am the West Coast editor at Glamour, if you're just tuning in. And I can't wait for you all to see A Welcome Home Christmas coming out next week. And we have two of the stars with us today, the absolutely lovely Jana Kramer and the fantastic Craig Morgan. So thank you both for joining us. How are you guys? Good, thank you for having us. Hi, uh, hi Craig. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> uh, where are you both right now? Where are, uh, where's your home base at the moment? Hi, Craig. Uh, I'm outside of Nashville in Dixon, Tennessee. Um, I'm actually not at my house because I live so far in the country that uh, we don't have internet out there. I have to come into town. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, but we have a publishing office here in town, so I'm able to come in and set up and uh, and talk to everybody. <laughs> I love it, and I'm I'm in uh, I'm in Franklin, so kind of pretty close. We, we're kind of yeah, close. we're not far. No. I love that. And then you guys filmed the movie in Nashville, is that right? Yeah, we filmed it in um, what was that, Springfield, Craig? Yeah, in Springfield. Yeah, a so cute little town. It's a great little place. Uh, kind of uh, just probably thirty miles outside of Nashville. Yeah, it was, it was great. So for me, I was able to, you know, go to set then come home and still be able to tuck my kids into bed at night. So it was, it was awesome being able to film. I thought it was actually a, when I got the, the, um, about the movie and where it was filming, I was like, this is a dream right now. Like this is not happening. <laughs> Are you sure? Like we're, in, there's a pandemic going on we're, really like we can do this and it's going to be in Nashville. Like this is, it felt too good to be true, to be honest. That brings me to something I've been wondering is when did you guys actually film this? Was it during the pandemic? We filmed this, yeah, in August. Wow. Yeah, so it was right in the, really, I mean, in the middle of this thing. And it was kind of, I'm like you, Jenna, when it was like, you got, we got this opportunity for this movie. I'm like, uh, like next August? <laughs> I mean, are we, is that what we're shooting for? Um, so it was, it was exciting, but it was a, a little, uh, unusual because we didn't, I, I know from, I can speak for myself. I didn't expect anything like this to be able to happen. So it was good that it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It was a, it was a beautiful um, surprise in 2020 for sure. Yeah. That's so fantastic. I know you wouldn't think that they would be able to turn it around this fast too. Only a couple yeah. months later. That's truly incredible. Craig, I want to talk to you about the fact you are a veteran and something that is so special about this movie is that it's Lifetime's first movie centered around a military vet, which is really exceptional because that representation matters so much. So what did that mean to you to be part of something like this? Oh, it was very special. It, uh, you know, I was humbled, to, first of all, um, as a veteran, and, and I think I can speak on behalf of most veterans, we never do anything as veterans to bring glory or highlight to ourselves. It's always for the betterment of other people and, and the nation and so on and so forth. So to be able to do a movie to highlight that um, is it, a very special thing. I was, uh, again, honored, humbled uh, to be able to play a role that wasn't very far uh, away from my own personality. So it was, for me, my, my particular character, Colonel Cole, was really easy. Uh, I just kind of took myself back a few years and, uh, <laughs> and I was there. I was, uh, I was already a, a part of this movie in real life. So it was, it was a, a lot of fun, but it's very humbling to be able to do something like that, uh, yeah. to be able to, again, bring light to those men and women that are serving. Absolutely. And something else the film does so well too, is it, it really spots like spotlights, the family members of veterans. You know, you don't see that a lot of what it's like for the siblings, for the wives, for the husbands, for the parents. And it, it's just so great to see that in such a joyous holiday movie and touch on all those subjects. So I'm, I'm really excited for you guys and for viewers to see this. Um, Jana, what did you take away from this experience um, on a welcome home Christmas? I mean, I took away a lot. I mean, just 
the fact that we actually got to work with um, people that are in the army. Um, so a lot of the people that you see that are um, extras, they're actually currently serving in fighting for our country. So that was really cool to be able to just talk to them and, um, you know, in a way just be on the, I'll never, we'll never be on the same level because, you know, they're fighting for our country, but it, we, we all, it was like this great camaraderie with everybody and, you know, they, they had fun and we had fun and it was just, um, it was just really special. You could just tell that everyone was, you know, really excited to just be working. And again, the fact that it touched on veterans and being able to work with um, people in the army was super special because I loved, you know, talking to them and hearing their stories and where, where they come from. And if they get to, you know, spend Christmas with their families and, or are they going to have to leave again? So um, it's definitely, you know, the, the weight of all of that really carries into the, to the movie to just um, remember how important it is to be around your family and, and those that are away to remember those uh, people as well. Yeah. Oh, I love hearing that so much. That is really special. And they'll get a kick out of watching it when they see yeah. themselves <laughs> on, on screen. Um, talk to me as well. You guys have such an outstanding cast that is in this film with you. Charlene Tilton, uh, Brandon Quinn, who fans will recognize from Sweet Magnolias uh, mm -hmm. right now. It was so fun to see all these recogni recognizable faces. So what did they bring to this experience? I mean, I'll just speak for um, Tim Reed. I mean, he brought, um, Tim, yeah. he's just, I was a little intimidated to work with him in the beginning because he just, he has this amazing presence, um, but he's so knowledgeable. But when you get to know him and you get to talk to him, like in, in you know, when they would call cut, I would just sit there and ask him questions about, I mean, he's been acting for years and, you know, what it was like, you know, then and and it just, kind of picking his brain on things. So it was to work with those legends and then like, you know, Charlene Tilton and just to, to be able to just sit there and hear their stories and um, not ask for advice, but just, you know, just to learn was really cool. Yeah, I, I would allude to the same thing. For me, it was really special uh, just to be around all these guys that have done so much more work than I have in, in television and in movies. But uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. They were great. Uh, I, I really, uh, uh, I met uh, Christopher, and in fact, after the movie, he had planned to come to my house uh, and visit and hang out. He's from Atlanta, and we're going through Atlanta here in a few weeks. I get to stop in and see him, so I, I made a new friend in this movie. Uh, so, yeah, it was a very special cast, uh, uh, just a boatload of talent. Uh, Jana was alluding to this kind of intimidation I truly was intimidated by the talent Jenna's a phenomenal phenomenal actress and and just does such a great job and so it was a it was a lot of fun it was very uh in, informative and educational both <laughs> well it was it was cool to work with Craig because I've been friends with Craig for years and so the yeah. fact that we got to you know act together it was it was it was fun because I felt like you know because you know your your character we have that camaraderie so it just felt really natural so it was I was so happy that you know Craig um, got the role and that we were able to have this camaraderie because I think it definitely plays well for sure. That's so cool. I love that. Oh, I'm going to start having an accent now, by the way. I'm, I love listening to you guys so much. Do I have an accent? A little, a little bit. Really? I like it. A little, it's very subtle, but I, I think Craig hearing him speak every time he does, I was like, I'm going to have, I'm going to have one at the end of this and I'm very excited about it. Um, I, it if you like. I can do something a little different if you prefer. It's a lot, pro more, lot more proper. <laughs> I can never, if I was to do an accent like that, it would go from like British <laughs> to like Mexican, like it would just go all over the place. All so over. Yeah. Uh, I've spent the last five days with some Cajun people, so I'm surprised I'm not talking like this right here by now already. <laughs> oh my gosh, too funny. <laughs> Craig was just mentioning a little bit of why he loved his character and he could relate to him in a lot of ways. Jana, I love your character um, in the film. So tell me why, why you loved her um, and, and what's something that maybe you took away after playing her? So why I loved her is we're very similar with we do a million things um, where, you know, it's just we're constantly um, working and trying to help other people. And that's what I definitely really took away from 
from that as well. Um, but also what I took from it is to know that it's okay to stop too and just enjoy things a little bit. Because I think sometimes when you're just working and for me, I'm always like constantly creating and dreaming. And I think that's amazing. But at the same time, you might miss the beauty and the joy along the way if you're constantly going so fast and not taking a second to just breathe and take it all in and celebrate your accomplishments along the way. Cause I, I have a feeling I'm like, okay, cool. That's nice. Got that. But now what's the next thing? Like, and, and not really like celebrating the fact that, oh my gosh, I just filmed a movie and during COVID and, you know, really breathing that in and being like, I'm so grateful for that instead of yeah. being like, okay, great. Now I have to find a different job or I have to figure something else out. So just having the mentality just to breathe and just like soak it in. So true. Before we get to the fan Q and a, we're going to play a quick game of this or that holiday edition. Okay. So I want to know exactly what comes to your mind. As soon as I give you the options, are you ready? We're going to run through these, get, get ready in your, get ready in your seat. Okay. First one, uh, classy holiday attire or ugly Christmas sweater. Ugly Christmas sweater. I'm going to go with classy. I knew you would, but that's why. I'm <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Real tree or fake tree? Both. Real tree. You can't pick both. You got to pick one. Then real. Okay. Yeah. Just real. Right. Clear, <laughs> clear lights or color lights? Clear. Uh, color. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you would. <laughs> okay. Warm climate for the holidays or a white Christmas? White Christmas. White Christmas. Mm -hmm. But just for one day and then I want it gone. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to snow and then I want it to leave. Okay. Hot chocolate or eggnog? Hot chocolate. Eggnog. <laughs> By the way, wait, something I have to know. I'm dying to know this. In the film, of course, Jana, your mom, Charlene's character, she makes, she's perfecting this hot chocolate. Was there really hot chocolate that you guys were drinking? Like, mm -hmm. I just, please say, just say yes. Yes, it was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> it was really, really good water. It was nice. Don't I ruin the dream. They didn't, you know, there were so many COVID restrictions. It was. Oh, um, yeah. It was just like, you're getting water. I'm, okay. Okay, fair enough. We'll let it slide on this movie, but I'm telling you right now, next holiday movie, your, I need hot chocolate in, those, yes, in yes. those cups. Okay. Um, home Alone or Die Hard? Home Alone. Die Hard. <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life or Love Actually? Love Actually. Wonderful Life. <laughs> this is good. Okay. One big expensive gift to receive or lots of little stocking stuff, stuffers to receive? Big. Yeah, I'm going to go with big too. Okay, playing in the snow or watching it fall from inside? That's Play. not fair, both. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it is a- Playing. Yeah. yeah playing, playing in the snow. Yeah. Okay, flannels or velvet? Flannel. flannel. Okay, this is for a scent of a candle. Okay, so what candle scent would you pick? Either warm sugar cookie or a pine cone or like woodsy? Pine cone. Pine cone woodsy. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Opening presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Oh. You get one present on Christmas Eve. Hey, there you go. And, and then the rest Christmas Day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and la last one here. Decorating the tree or baking holiday desserts? Which would you rather do? Tree all the way. Baking holiday desserts. Dessert. Really? Oh, I despise doing the tree. Why? It's so much fun. Oh no, Karen does it all. No, I don't have the patience. You should know that. Okay, just take a deep breath, put an ornament up. It'll just change your life. I'm telling I can't, you. I can't, some stand, good I can't stand the next to the tree that long. <laughs> Men. It would, not, there would be lots is. of hot cocoa and eggnog. <laughs> That is the best, most honest answer ever. I, listen, as a Jewish kid growing up, you know, I would love to go over to friends' houses and decorate <laughs> their tree, but it's, I mean, it's a process. It takes it a is. long time. It's, it's, it's so it's time so consuming. It's so fun. And, it, you know, it's just fun. I love I, it. No, no. No, no, no. <laughs> See, but I don't like taking the ornaments down. That's my least favorite part about Christmas. Yeah. Really That's even worse. Yeah. That's, That's the worst part. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. See, Craig gets the best of both worlds because he bakes cookies while having a candle that smells like pine cones and woods and everything <laughs> else. Craig, They're what cookies do you bake? 
Do you know the kind you get in the little log and you exactly. cut them off? That is not. <laughs> no, I love that. Not. Okay, now we're going to go to some fan Q and A's. Although I could keep playing this 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 or that game, I'm having fun. Okay, Jana, any special holiday activities that you do with your kids every year? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we just started Elf on the Shelf um, <laughs> last year, and yeah, our little Opie comes and he's our Elf on the Shelf. So. I love that. That's so cool. This is a really good one too. Craig, uh, being in the military, do you have advice for people that might be spending the holidays away from their loved ones this year? Uh, yeah. I mean, I talk to the soldiers a lot, uh, uh, believe it or not, for the last, up until COVID, um, we go over to Iraq and or Afghanistan or other parts of the world uh, to visit those men and women that are serving that are away from their families. Uh, it's it's real. It's hard on those men and women, but I, I have found after spending so many years with these families and having done it myself, it's harder on the family at home. Mm -hmm. So I just tell them uh, to you to to be very proud of their men and women, their family members that are away from them, and know that even though they can't celebrate Christmas at that moment, they can celebrate that moment when they do get back. It, it's not about that particular. They can celebrate any holiday they want whenever they can. And that's what I tell them. So their Christmas doesn't have to be on December 25th. It can be on March the 3rd when they walk back home or walk in that front door after being overseas. Uh, for, but, you, but what most people don't understand for them, that's everyday life. It's not just the Christmas. But for Christmas, I will say Christmas is always... I think the toughest holiday to be away from home. And I wished I could tell you why I'm sure there's psychologists and psychiatrists that could, but I do know that having been away for many Christmases myself mm -hmm. and being overseas with those men and women as well, who are missing holidays, that that is the toughest holiday. Uh, so it's really important for everyone outside of that inner circle to recognize that that's difficult for these military families and show them the support and love that they need in that time of, of hardship. That's a beautiful answer. I love that. And, and thank you for that. I, that's going to give a lot of people some comfort because they are going through that this holiday season. Um, here's a really sweet and fun one. Since you are both singers, um, what is your favorite holiday song to sing? Not just listen to, but to actually sing. You first. I love Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. So the Christmas song. Christmas song, yeah. Christmas roasting on an open fire. I love that song. That's a good oh, one. That's a good and, one. And every if, every yeah, great artist in the world has sang that song, and it's, there's not a bad version. Oh, I was gonna say I don't know if we have the rights to that, but just keep going like that. Can you <laughs> like? Can that be my new ringtone? I love that. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your I just love that song. Are just magic. I, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, okay, let's find another fun one here. Um, what is the best Christmas gift you ever got or you gave? Oh, man. Mm. See, I like to do the, um, the sentimental gifts where it's just, um, you know, it could be uh, like the coordinates of like where my, our kids were born or something like put it on a necklace for the husband. Like I, I love, I love any, and any sentimental gift I get, I will always cry. Like I just, I will take that over any diamond any day. Like I love sentimental. Um, so any, yeah, I mean, over the years, there's been a few sentimentals, but um, that, that would probably be my, be my favorite. What about you, Craig? I don't know. That's difficult. You know, after, after Jerry, our son, after we lost our son, we, we got so many very special things with his football number or his college logo with his name on it. Marshall University sent us a football from a bowl game that they won that my son would have been playing on the team. That was very special to us. So I'm like you. I think those sentimental things, uh, they, at, they, at least they're the ones I remember. Mm -hmm. that and, and the shotgun when I was a kid <laughs> <laughs> I like that by the way Craig another question for you is what was it like transitioning um 
into acting and how, how has that been? What are, what are some of the things that were tough for you to, to learn um, and what came so easy? Uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm still transitioning. <laughs> um, I, you know, that's what was great about this particular movie for me because it felt so natural. The, the, this character was really easy for me to comprehend and understand his thought process. I knew when I was sitting in the chair and I'm talking to my, uh, my employee, I knew what he did. I've, I know, I knew him, I was him, I've been him. So it was really easy. Um, but the greatest thing that I have found for me is that I've, I learned something every time. Every time, every, every time I go in to do a movie or do a TV show or something, I learn something every time. And, and, and I'm always focused on trying to get better. I think I said that to Jana when we were filming. I said, my goal is just to always get better. Uh, and, and I felt like on this one, I, I learned something about uh, lines. Uh, and Brian was phenomenal uh, to work with. Um, he was really good at allowing us to... Uh, I don't want to say stray from the lines, but employ our personalities into our character, which sometimes dictated us uh, uh, manipulating the lines just enough. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it really helped, I think, define the characters. So, yeah, but as far as transitioning, I'm still working. I tell people that all the time. In fact, Jen and I have talked about that. <laughs> well, you're extremely natural on camera. You you played this role so, so well. I, I wanna see a sequel already. I say that about most of these movies because they are, they draw you in and they're, they're so great to watch. So you did a fantastic job. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but you did really, really well. I haven't seen it, but I will tell you, I am so excited for this movie more than any I've done because I've talked to a bunch of buddies and I have a lot of military friends, you know, after, after having done that for so long in my life. And it's so funny to talk to these guys and some of the veterans, they're like, man, I, I had to watch it. And my wife, that's all she watches is Lifetime. So, and, and I've watched these movies with her. And so, yeah, so it's, it's going to be really neat to see that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a movie that a lot of friends and people see. I love that so much. By the way, too, I'm wearing my, you can't really see, I'm wearing Lifetime flannel sweatpants right now. And I'm like, <laughs> what other better? I don't know. Like, I'm like, and they actually, say, they actually say lifetime on them, but I'm like, what better chance am I ever going to have to wear lifetime flannel pajama bottoms than hosting the It's a Wonderful <laughs> Lifetime live than this? I mean, it's the greatest outfit I've ever put together. I have to say, That's can't fantastic. always say that. Can't always me, say that, but you me know. and my girlfriends are getting together with matching PJs, and we're going to watch the movie. So I'm I'm really jealous we didn't get the lifetime ones, but the Target <laughs> ones will have to do. You know what? There's still enough time before the movie airs. And also I was going to mention that your movie will re-air. It's going to premiere on Saturday, November 7th, but it will re-air for a special encore on Veterans Day on Wednesday, November oh. 11th, which is so great. And I, I hope that people really, if they can't watch over the weekend, that they get a chance to on that Wednesday, because like you said, Craig, the representation, it's so important for families to see themselves portrayed in, in such a beautiful way like this. So I love that. Um, last couple questions before we're completely out of time here. And I hate that. Um, this is a fun one. How soon do you put up your Christmas tree at home? So last year we put it up probably November, like the first week of November. And my husband said, we are not doing that again. He's like, I've never thought I would get sick of Christmas decorations. He's like, it was up way too long. So, cause by the time, you know, Christmas rolled around, we we're like, this has been up for two months now. So uh, we'll probably do it now the week of Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. Maybe so you, so is the question, when do we put it up or how long do we leave it up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, it's gone then like the, pretty much the next day. I'm like, put it up. It's done. Christmas is over. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> my wife starts around after the holiday, after Thanksgiving. I have this okay. thing. I'm really funny. Like, I don't want the next holiday stuff up if the current holiday is not here yet. Like, I don't like going to the store on Halloween and seeing Christmas decorations. <laughs> Drives me nuts. I'm so OCD. So we don't put it up till after Thanksgiving. But 
Like we have to scramble to get it down for New Year's. <laughs> That's that actually is quick. I've seen people leave theirs up all through the month of January. But you know, I was gonna say in a pandemic, anything goes. If you want it up all year long, you leave it up all year long. Whatever brings you joy during this time, do it. I agree. <laughs> That's, that's what I say. Last thing for you both before we have to wrap, it's, it's something I wanted to know, which is what is the message you hope that viewers take away once they watch uh, the film? What do you want them, what's the lasting message you want them to, uh, to really think about? I think for me and um, what I kind of learned too in the film that um, it's okay to believe and it's, it's a beautiful thing to believe um, and to not lose that um, because, you know, you should always believe in your dreams and believe that maybe there is a Santa. And um, yeah, so I just, to, to always believe and, and never lose sight of that, um, those dreams. Uh, I, I think for me, I, I'd love to see people after watching this movie have some joy mm -hmm. and know that, uh, uh, and the movie, the one thing, even though it wasn't, you know, again, it's a military theme, but it's not a, as much about the military as it is about this Christmas. But there's a great uh, deal of respect paid to the men and women that are serving. And I think when people see this movie, they might have a, a much deeper appreciation uh, for those men and women that are serving and the families that are separated from one another and know that we are all blessed and, and, and to have those people and that they should, they are able to, to be joyous in light of everything that's going on. I mean, goodness, like you said, if you want to keep your tree up this 2020, <laughs> <laughs> let's hope it's different next year. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to see people find joy. And I think they, in, in most lifetime movies, there is some really, uh, harmonious love and kindness and things that are shared. And this, this movie's not, doesn't stray from that thought process. So. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. Where were we going to say, Jan? I didn't mean no, to I said, that. well said. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, well said. Well, just as a reminder to all our viewers right now, that again, a welcome home Christmas will premiere next Saturday, November 7th at eight o'clock on lifetime. And then a special encore on veterans day, Wednesday, November 11th. And then last but not least, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the last hour. So if you want to watch more of Lifetime Live, which of course you do, and hopefully you'll dress up like me and have your hot cocoa or your eggnog, um, make sure to register at the Lifetime Live website because these are going to be happening all month long. And now we are going to take a look at a few of the new Lifetime holiday movies that are premiering this weekend. And thank you, Jana and Craig and everyone for joining Lifetime Live. I had a blast. I hope you guys did too. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for joining in. Bye. October 30th. This letter was inside the book. I wanted to find the person who wrote it. She wrote off love, but one letter to Santa? He was just a nice stranger. Nice looking stranger. We'll craft up some romance. Nicola Posener and Brad Johnson. We have been looking for you to return something that's yours. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. A Crafty Christmas Romance premieres Friday, October 30th at 8th, part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime, 24-7 holiday movies all season long. There isn't going to be a candy cane lane this year. October 31st. I don't know what I'm going to do. Find a way to make this Christmas magical. We're closed. It's a Christmas emergency. Let me guess. The whole world has lost its Christmas spirit, and you're the only one who could get it back. Yes. Decorate your life. Do you like it? It's wonderful. With a twist of love. Beverly Mitchell, Mark Genimay, Candy Cane Christmas. Premier Saturday, October 31st at 8, 7 central. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. 24-7 holiday movies all season long. November 1st. You want me to come take care of Maggie and Dan for two weeks? She'll help them find their Christmas spirit. Were you two boyfriend and girlfriend? No. And they'll help her find thinking I like you. <laughs> Holiday love. Listen to your heart and have a little faith. Keisha Knight Pulliam and Jared Joseph. I think you're the whole package. The Christmas Ant premieres Sunday, November 1st at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. 24-7 holiday movies all season long.